everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 108 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. This one is called New Message, tailored for on-air read. Hi there, Mark. Just learned about QE 2019 California. I can't wait. I missed the FEIC by fate, meaning I had too much going on. When I heard you walked out, I was glad I missed it. I would have been PO'd as I was looking forward to your speaking more than any of the others. My opinion on your walkout. Hey, you are a grown-ass man. If Robbie didn't have you under contract, you are free to go whenever, uh, wherever, whenever you please. If you were wise and in the future, I'd recommend you guys write a contract between you. You are a celebrity now. You have the right to act like one. You can demand the hotel, cloak your room in all white, remove the salt from your pretzels. Oh, that's a new new one. And put out green M&Ms only. Uh, that part's is a joke. Mark Sargent is now a celebrity. Very serious. Uh, I'm. It's very obvious you do F.E. for the love of it. Many people are going to owe you their everything to you. Someday, I could be wrong, but it does not seem you give yourself much credit for your influence and position in the community. I am of the school. Anything worth doing is worth doing for money. <laughs> if I were in your shoes, I'd hire a manager. I'd have someone full-time watching my back and doing my dirty work. A multi-talented manager publicist would be good for you. Enough about you. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of my letter. I want to share an opinion about the whole FE thing and its potentiality of reaching critical mass in the near future. First, I can't even believe the whole thing is actually happening. I am like you. I think this is a gateway to a much bigger reveal. I think all those who are pushing so very hard to shove flat earth into critical mass better think carefully of the ramifications. Let's play a game. Let's say the flat earth community gets what they say they want, world, uh, what, they, what they want. World governments and powers that should not be step up to the podium tomorrow and acknowledge the lie. They admit the world is flat. Moon landing was fake. $52 million a day for 50 years earmarked. NASA goes into the pockets of the elite for more yachts and airplanes. What's next? Just like you said in the clue is we are talking about a reset of the world. We are talking about a breakdown of social services, mass religious hysteria, and God knows what else. Are we all ready for that? Is this what everybody wants? Is that a good thing? Maybe it is, maybe not. All I'm saying is let's think about it. I encourage everyone in the community to think long and hard about this. Maybe it's best to let the whole Flat Earth movement grow at its own pace. Let the trollers troll, let Neil deGrasse Tyson assign more fruit shapes to the earth, and so on. When this finally does hit critical mass, hopefully everyone in the plane, I'm sorry, on the plane, will have heard so much about Flat Earth already, it's no big surprise and we can elect Mark Sargent president. Seriously, this may be the way to soften the blow, so to speak. However, it comes out and it will come out. Hopefully it won't shock the world so badly that it sends them into the streets with weapons and pitchforks. What is your opinion on the reveal? That would be the best, what would be the most uh, best, most peaceful way for this to reach mainstream without anarchy? I am afraid one of our researchers will make a discovery and or revelation over a night that would catapult this to the front page news and the world is not ready. What do you think? Looking forward to seeing you in LA, QE 2019 in February. Dinner and drinks are on me. What do you say? Keep it flat. Dan Nola out of New Orleans. Uh, yeah, Dan, it's, I think the way it's going is the way it's supposed to go. Everything seems to be moving along quite naturally. And don't forget that, that I know, you know, there's this, this chance that things might go, might go wrong. And when I wrote the clues, that's exactly what I thought. I thought there was a small percentage of people that would lose their minds and, and do horrible things out there. But that hasn't been the case. We've had hundreds of meetups and conferences in multiple countries, and we haven't had a single incident, not for or against. We haven't had anybody try to wreck the place for, that's anti-flat earth, and we haven't had any flat earthers do really destructive things. So right now we're, we're batting a thousand, which you know we're not gonna be able to keep it up forever. But it's it's gone really, really well so far. So my my early fears have been more or less alleviated. I'm, I'm not sweating it at the moment. Maybe maybe that is one of the side effects of flat earth. Not only do you have extreme open mindedness, but you also have uh, extra compassion so that you don't want remember remember what i said i i'll never do another malicious thing to a human being again now of course i'll defend myself if, if it comes to that but i'm not going to go out of my way to hurt somebody not unless it's provoked 
So that's that's my answer. This one's called Hi from Israel. Hi, Mark. First, I'd like to say I'm very happy you answered the phone call. I'd like to say again how me and my friends in Israel appreciate what you are doing for the movement. So as we talk uh, already in the phone, here's the video I've done on the Columbia. If you need anything else or have any questions about it, I would love to something. I don't know what that word is. Uh, thank you again and keep in touch. And that's Natai, uh, your friend in Israel. P.S. Today, I'm actually living in Denmark together with my wife. So if you come to Denmark or Israel or Denmark, <laughs> he did that twice, Denmark, uh, please let me know and we would love to meet you. Have a great day. Cool. And I will I will check out that YouTube link on Columbia when I get a chance. It's going to go into my to-do pile. This one's called Antarctica. Hello, Mark. I recently was watching a video on YouTube where you were interviewed about Antarctica. Did you ever find out any information of ships sailing completely around Antarctica? I saw a video years ago. I think Admiral Byrd was involved in this. I, I heard it took him more than two months. I actually was not Byrd. That was years, years in, or earlier. I think it was Cook that supposedly tried to sail around Antarctica, and it took him far, far longer than he thought. Uh, I am trying to gather real info to show the earth is flat. I guess do experiments myself. Blessings. Tim Chavez. Yeah, as far as ships going around Antarctica, look up the uh, the, the, fa the famous yacht race they do every year down there where it looks like they're going around, but then they turn around and go back. It's They're, they're not circumnavigating everything. Look at the route if you get a chance. Very, very interesting. Uh, in fact, Peanut Gallery did a, a wonderful uh, set of things on that. Send them to me. This one's called Looking Into Fair Use. All right. Mark, good day to you, my friend. William here from Northern California. I was looking up some Hebrew-related topics concerning Christmas and its origins and how it correlated to the names of the months of Hebrew to what we use today. Do you know, any? Do you know according to God's word, the new year starts in either March or April? Uh, anyway, when doing this research, I inadvertently hit a link about copyright laws and saw in a, that a site link about the good old fair use clause we as flat earthers use to avoid copyright infringement when we use such work in our debunking of the current scientific model of our cosmology. Now, as I have said before, I've been following the movement on YouTube for over three years. So... With that said, I read the link and was surprised how short it was. They talked about the four factors courts will use in deciding the case should two parties be unable to settle themselves whether a copyright infringement occurred or not under the fair use clause. Those four, four were, uh, one, the purpose and character of the use, including whether such use of commercial nature is for nonprofit educational purposes. Two, the nature of the copyright work. Three, the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyright work as a whole. Four, the effect of the use of the potential market for or value of the copyright work. But what caught my eye was the paragraph under factor four in this website. It further stated, in examining the fourth factor, which courts tend to view as the most important factor, a court will look to see how much the market value of the copyrighted work is affected by the use in question. This factor will weigh in favor of the copyright holder if unrestricted and widespread use similar to the one in question would have a substantially adverse impact on the potential market for the work. So my question is this, if this is truly a massive lie, as we suspect by all evidence up to this point, can fair use protect this movement? When all is said and done, when you stated yourself in the beginning of the word it, that the world's three paradigms would be shaken to their core and would have to rebuild from the ground up. I think those three you mentioned were academia, science in particular, economics, and religion. Sorry, Mark, I can't quite remember if religion was the third one you used to always mention when talking during interview. Yeah, it is uh, re religious or spiritual. Take your pick. So as you can see, the end of factor four is definitely the case if the truth does get out. At that point, fair use will not be able to protect us. Something greater will have to. I would like to think the truth shall prevail. Would be very interested in your thoughts. Forgive me if this possibly turns over a hornet's nest. I have always had the tendency to do this with many things in my life. I would say it's proof of me always seeking the truth no matter what. Maybe you have already connected these dots. I will understand if you don't share this email live because I don't want to snuff out anyone's courage to seek out all truth in all things. No, I, I don't. I wouldn't worry about that. It's this isn't going to do anything. Uh, that pun was not originally intended, but I decided to leave it in after seeing it through my second proofreading, which I think you would appreciate. Yes, I, I encourage every everybody to proofread their emails, including me. This is just reason number thirty-four. 
why I always choose God and his truths in the word, which is Christ, so that on that day when I stand before him to give an account, I can say I always defaulted to your word, Lord, and not the word of man. Okay, there you go, Mark. Here is me looking into things for myself and using my own brain that the good Lord gave me. Here's the link of the fair use clause as well. Yep. I pray you are well this Saturday afternoon. As always, peace to you, my friend, William. P.S. I thought for sure this was going to be a short email. Dang it. I think I did the best I could considering the point I found. Yes, you did. Actually, it's, it's considering the ground you covered. It's pretty short. Thank you for that. This one's called Dear Friend. Dear Friend. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read this one. You guys will... Yeah, you guys will understand this one because most people don't even read these anymore. But this one I, I like. Dear friend, my name is Frank David. I work uh, one of the banks in my country, Burkina Faso in West African. Really? West African? That's a country? Not West. I hoped that you will not expose or betray the trust and confidence that I am about to repose on you for the mutual benefit of our both families. I need your urgent assistance in transferring the sum of 10.5 million US dollars into your account. Right on. Sign me up. I want to release the money to you as the nearest person to our deceased customer, the owner of the account, the account died along with his supposed next of kin a few years ago. I don't want the money to go into our bank treasury account as unclaimed fund. This is the reason why I contacted you, so that the bank here will release the money to you as the nearest person to the deceased customer. Please, I would like you to keep this proposal as a top secret or delete it from your mailbox if you are not interested. Upon receipt of your reply, I will send you full details on how the business will be executed and an application letter of claim which I will fill for you with your information of which you are going to give me below <laughs> so that you can send to the bank for the release of the money to your bank. This is one of the worst one written ones ever. Uh, also note that you will have 40% of the above mentioned sum, a 60, 40 split. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, if you agree to transact the business with me while 60% will go to me, Th to be very honest with you, this transaction, which I have introduced you too is totally genuine and 100% risk-free. That is why you should not entertain any atom of fear. <laughs> As all required arrangements have been made for the transfer by the grace of God, please, for full trust, don't forget to apply. Okay, here again. Don't forget to reply with your contact information, like your name, age, marital status, cell phone number, your country, your house address, your occupation, sex, religion, your ID card, or international passport, and your private email address. Looking forward to hearing from you immediately. Please contact me by private mail. Sincerely yours, Frank David. Uh, 20, over 20 years that scam has been running and it never goes away. And, and of course, the Americans are the ones that fall for it the most. Okay, this is called Slides and Question. Hello, Mark. I love your videos and am convinced. However, I've been trying to inform my sister and kids, but they are so close-minded. You mentioned the 12 slides. Could I, please, could I please get a copy so I can show them? Also, my sister asked, where do the meteor showers and asteroids come from? Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, yep, Cheryl, meteors throwing rocks in an aquarium. Do I think they're real? Eh, real-ish. And you see stuff in the sky. You know, I'd love to see one hit the ground once ever you know not not just crater well we have craters yeah anyone that witnessed the crater anywhere uh this one's called 2017 eclipse issues hi mark my name's drew i live in central florida just wanted to say hello and touch base with you on something that's been bugging me ever since the so-called great american eclipse last year as we all saw on the fake news channels and everywhere everyone else reported it clearly showed the eclipse shadow moving from west to east across our country. Yep, I know. I was there in Oregon when it was going from west to east. Apparently, starting somewhere in Oregon, yep, as a matter of fact, it was Salem, Oregon. I was literally there at ground zero. And passing over to end with South Carolina. I'll get to the point now and what is really killing me. I took some photos with my camera facing the sun as the moon passed by in my view from left to right, meaning the usual direction of the moon from east to west. So knowing that general knowledge combined with what I saw with my own photo lens and with my eyes i do not understand how the moon passed over the sun in such a way that could have created a sh shadow that was casted backwards across the face of the u.s according to what the news is reporting it should 
of went across the face of the U.S. from east to west, for example, starting in South Carolina and in Oregon. Please help me understand because you are the smartest flat earther I know. Hashtag brain train. Uh, Drew McCurdy. Uh, by the way, if you shout me out in a video, I may have more guts to share my opinion with friends and family if I had my name. Uh, uh, either way, of course, I'll go ahead and keep preaching the teaching, bro. I've attached my pics. Okay, first off, what took you so long to write this? You got to remember the eclipse was like middle of last year, 2017. We're we're almost at 2019. That's coming up in, in a couple of weeks. So where have you been? Uh, also, as far as explaining west to east versus east to west, uh, even mainstream science has a really, really tough time. There was a, a, a wonderful mainstream story that I, I reproduced and you can find it on my channel. Type, type in flat earth eclipse mainstream. And you should see the the video that was that was done by a major source. And in fact, they even went to NASA to explain it, and everybody explained it wrong. All the all the graphics were wrong. All the explanations were absolutely totally wrong. And not only that, most of them couldn't even remember. Most people aren't three dimensional thinkers like that, and so they had a hard time doing it. So no, I I can't explain it either. I, I can't. Sorry, it's my my short version. Look up the video if you get a chance. It's very very interesting. This one's called Flat Earth and Mars, ha ha ha. Good morning or evening, Mark. Hoping you are well. Just a short one. I'm in the Canaries at the moment celebrating my mom's 70th birthday. Happy birthday, mom. Uh, British people say M-U-M, not M-O-M. Uh, watching Sky News, and they just informed us about the latest mission to Mars. As per usual, every picture is CGI. They even said to listen to the sound of Mars. I sat there shouting at the television, bollocks. Anyway, just thought I'd share this with you and all those awakened souls. Love, health, and happiness always. Bob Jellyman from Eastbourne, England. Stay flat, guys. Cool. Awesome. This one's called Sun and Vacuum. Dear Mark, I have had a thought. How could the sun survive in the vacuum of space? Would it not be sucked to oblivion and be spread out through space? Would its so-called gravity counter the vacuum, or is my reasoning or idea wrong? Can you please give me an answer? Regards, Paul from Down Under. You know what? That is very, very interesting. Very interesting. I, I had not had anyone actually mention that. And forget about the Earth and its atmosphere. The sun is just a giant ball of gas in a massive, massive vacuum. So why isn't the vacuum of space tearing that thing apart? I mean, yeah, it's got a huge amount of mass, but not at the fringes. Remember, the sun has a bleeding edge like everything else. Why isn't that giant uh, thermonuclear explosion... Why isn't that uh, uh, being torn apart? It's good. It's a good question. I like it. And of course, science will say, "Oh, it's gravity." Um, let's see here. This one, the formatting on this is all wrong. So, but I'll I'll read it anyway. And no, I was wrong. I pasted this in the Notepad. And every once in a while, I don't know if you guys get emails where the formatting just runs from left to right, and, it, and the word wrap doesn't kick in. For some reason, this 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 email is actually huge, uh, so I can't read it. Uh, and there's a lot of a lot of numbers in it. And you guys are gonna get bored if I read that. Um, but it's from Andrew Thomas. Thank you, Andrew, for sending that. It's called Lick Observatory displays 100% the Earth is flat. Um, uh, Andrew, try to try to summarize it a little more than that. It's it's just too it's too big and change the formatting. I'm not exactly sure how you sent this to me, and it's really strange that my email system didn't kick in the word wrap. But thank you for that. This one's called A Question. Hello, Mark. My name is Sanja. I'm from Belgrade, Serbia. I found your videos on YouTube after I started to research about Flat Earth and other similar theories. I have a question for you. I uploaded for you a photo, took with my camera 60D Canon and basic zoom 18 to 135. This summer, I was curious to uncover maybe something interesting in the sky. I tried to focus on the stars with my camera, but it wasn't easy with my equipment. But I made with this star... Or what is that exactly? And I am doing a mere zoom in Photoshop, only clear tool with no color correction at all. Can you help me? What can it be on my photo? Uh, uh, <laughs> is it star or planet or some type of simulation? Thank you in advance. Best luck, Sanja. And so let me view it real quick. And yeah, it's an interesting zoom in on that. I mean, it looks l very much like what you see with the P900s when you zoom in at a star, which is this fuzzy, blobby type nebulous thing. 
so yeah, it, very, very curious what, uh, you know, the lights in the sky, which is why our camera technology is getting better and better to where we're just going to detect this thing eventually. It's only a matter of time now. This one's called My Video Attached. Uh, Mark, I pulled the trigger, uploaded my video to YouTube. I did adjust some volume, screen, imagings, uh, added a couple slides. I hope it does not look super, super dumb rookie-like. And uh, it's from that's from Natalie. And Natalie made a video, and it's called Looking at the Facts, a Flat Earth, question mark, in parentheses, part one, photos. And her YouTube channel is called A Flat Journey. So check it out if you get a chance. It's called Looking at the Facts, a Flat Earth, part one, photos. And her channel a flat journey. Thank you for that, Natalie. This one's called BuzzFeed. 19 people who should have had their driver's license revoked in 2018. Hey, Mark, check out <clears throat> number 19. It's flat earth people. Keep fighting the good fight, Joe. And yeah, the article is called, <clears throat> literally called, 19 people who should have had their driver's license revoked in 2018. Uh, you can go check it out at the BuzzFeed website. And it's interesting. You know, most of the, the pictures are of people that are driving, you know, while eating or they're not looking at their, their steering wheel. They're, it's mostly huge distractions. In fact, the only person that's driving normally at the end is a flat earther. And they're driving a truck with a flat earth, uh, big, big bumper sticker on the back on the tailgate. So, yeah, it's very, very interesting. I like that. This one's called Naval Communications Officer. Good evening, Mark. Would you direct me to the audio where the communications officer explained the amount of energy required to send the messages from the moons of the Earth in 1969 if NASA was telling us the truth? I have a friend who's retired from the Navy. He's buying NASA's story, hook, line, and sinker. Thank you, Stuart. I think you took the correct me measures at the Denver Convention. That's his P.S. And I don't know, you know, I've, I've interviewed a whole bunch of people and I have been interviewed by a whole bunch of people. So forgive me if I don't remember every little point that people bring up. So what I did was in this case, I just sent him the list of the subject matter expert testimony shows. I sent him the full list of those and you guys can look for it. It's, it's a playlist on my channel, subject matter expert testimony. You'll find it. It's everybody in the military and the engineers, and, and I'm sure somebody talked about it. But yeah, the power, forget about the power gener that you need to generate to transmit to the moon. That's not the big one. The, the big one is how they actually beamed back full color or 30 frames per second video, television video back to the earth in real time. How, how did they send that back? How did you, you have a live television transmission from the moon when you had almost no VHF power? I mean, what, 50, uh, 50 watts? What was it? Oh, I can't remember the, the, the term. But anyway, the, the VHF transmitter only had like a 50-mile range on it. 50 miles. And that this thing fired back a quarter of a million miles perfectly lined up with no snow, you know, no huge amounts of distortion. It was this perfectly clear video that, that they beamed back from the moon with what miracle transmitter did they do this back in 1969? Uh, there's places we can drive right now where you don't get cell service right now. You don't get cell service. And yet this thing could transmit with a simple dish. It wasn't even that, that high tech of a dish in 1969 could beam back 30 frames per second. Uh, video or um, uh, video transmission and and audio. Tell me how tell me how that works. Tell me how they did that with with what transmitter. This one's called Take a Guess. Mark, I have become a voracious voracious follower of FE. I have viewed well over two dozen hours of your videos. <laughs> That's it, two dozen hours, <laughs> and probably dozens. Uh, from other FE experts, I have particularly enjoyed your interviews of science, industrial engineering, naval and aeronautics experts, as well as your conversations with Patricia Steer. I have run, however, into one big FE stumbling block. Uh-oh. To wit, <laughs> really? To wit? Uh, if indeed the sun, with its circular motion, is closest to the outer rim of the Earth, pancake, Antarctica during the summer months, it would appear to me that precisely because... It is closer to said wide 360 degrees outer edge. It would be able to cover a smaller, not a greater part of said large circumference in its oval light print of the summer than in some of their spring and fall months. And yet the lower southern hemisphere and areas such as Tierra del Fuego appears to have accompanied by long periods of sunlight in the summer. 
uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, any comments, feel free to call me, try my one number first and my second choice. And he actually gave me three numbers. Wow. And he's out of Jamaica, New Jersey. Uh, yeah, when it comes to the sun, uh, and that is probably one of the, the biggest sticking points, which is what is what is the lighting effect when you get out to an Ant Antarctica? Are there multiple light sources? Is the whole Antarctic 24-hour sun thing a cover-up? How is, how is it happening? Where is the light source coming from? And what are the secrets being kept out in Antarctica? Don't know. Don't know of them all. Uh, all I know is that, you know, the, it isn't what we say, what they say it is. That's all I can tell you right now. This one's called Nevermind. Mark, regarding my previous email, Phuket Word made a video call that nailed it. Ha, but you could mention the controversy and expose, uh, um, some YouTube channel, JC Sean D doll level science as he's one of the biggest anti-flat earthers out there well it can't be that big because i've never even heard of that channel i sent you the link to his stupid vid this is the link to fouquet's devastating rebuttal you know what let's click on it and see what it is called uh it's called flatter science lesson do not be deceived by time wasters and that's by fouquet word back in december 9th and uh, it's it's doing pretty well so I'm already subscribed to him, so thank you for that. This one's called, if I can actually get off of that one. This one's called Mark Contradiction in videos eight and 10. Mark, I'm not sure if you received my first email below. However, I feel compelled to send a second one because I did have a question. I am a firm believer of the flat earth, not because of blind faith, but because of the evidence laid before me in part by you, Eric DeBay, ODD TV, Jaronism, and others. However, I wanted to comment specifically on your flat earth clues, part eight and 10, or should I say my interpretation, which may be incorrect. I sort of felt that there was an inherent contradiction between the two, not related to the factual pieces, but to the interpretations thereof, or at least how I interpreted it. Flat Earth Clues Part 8 almost makes it sound like the builder creator slash God himself was responsible in hiding the flat earth from us in order to prevent us from doing what we did in the past. That is the civilization before us who created the Tower of Babel. On the other hand, Flat Earth Clues Part 10 appears to take a different approach, which admittedly you did say that in the video, and suggests that the powers that be who created the globe model did it to hide God from us, and that in itself is a bad idea. Now, up until this point, I always took the perspective that I was or is the evil powers, that B is hiding our true home from us, and that God himself, in other words, I could resonate a lot more with the Flat Earth Clues Part 10, more so than Part 8. God wants to know the truth because, if anything, the flat earth and the dome structure is real evidence that God is real. So I can't imagine, in that sense, why God would want us to think that we are an insignificant speck of dust flying through infinite space on a tiny, average-sized planet, part of an average-sized sun and solar system. Such a belief would drive us away from God, and God wants us to believe in him. However, in your Flat Earth Clues Part 8, you made some interesting points. In that video, it certainly makes it sound like that perhaps the Creator Builder, aka God, is responsible for keeping us from knowing the truth because if we do and pull together, we may attempt to do what we did in the past, which is to create a tower and attempt to reach God. So I guess my question to you is this. Which one do you believe is the truth? Obviously, this is more speculation than actual truth, but I do respect your opinion and would like to know what you think about this. It's also very possible that I misinterpreted something you said. However, when I listen to both these videos, it appears there may be a contradiction in thought processes. Personally, I see the flat earth as a gift credit from God. Gift credit? That's an interesting term. Uh, and no interest, no interest in trying to bust through a barrier because I believe that when I die, my soul transcends into heaven with him. I also don't believe we will ever be able to bust through the barrier, so I don't feel that there is any sense in trying. I also feel strongly that truth will set one free. I don't believe that God would want us to want to hide the truth from us, since I believe this character is one of goodness, love, justice, truth, etc. Therefore, I believe Satan is the father of lies, and it is the evil powers that be that far behind keeping us. He, I think he meant to say fall. 
uh, from knowing the truth and as a result wants to hide God from us. These, of course, are my opinions, but in terms of the actual evidence and factual information, I am 100% on the same page and have earned a lot from the things you've shared, not only on video, but also from the links you provided within the videos. No, you are exceptionally busy and I don't know you have time to respond to personal emails. However, if you do provide your email address and phone number, so I would... It'd be nice to get a reply if you have time or able to make the time. As I learn more, I genuinely believe that I'll be playing a role in spreading more of this truth. However, I am still learning despite the fact that I've already learned a lot and have been researching the topic for probably at least eight months. But I, like you and everyone else in the beginning, of the topic was brought up to me and I laughed and told the individual that they're ridiculous for even possibly believing um, we could be flat. Uh, brother, boy, was I wrong. I uh, hope to hear from you at some point, William. And yeah, you know, Clue 8 and Clue 10. Uh, Clue 8, again, it was more of a story about, you know, the Tower of Babel, even without saying it. Uh, and it was, again, trying to give people the example and the responsibility of, of, the, of doing the right thing when the information comes out, which is, uh, and I'm not saying that, that God deliberately hid it to permanently hide it from people it's it's a test like anything else you know when you're when you're taking a test or you're you're studying something you don't know the answers all, all right away the answers are hidden from you not not in a malicious way you're a student and you're trying to learn stuff and that's what i think god was doing here you the the journey here on this world is partially discovering everything you know it's it's not that if it's only going to be hidden temporarily it's just putting stuff behind a locked door it's not, it's not, it's a trick. It's not that you're going to be punked at the end. It's that, you know, we love a mystery. Human beings are hardwired among, well, there's a lot of different things we're hardwired for, but you're hardwired for, uh, to love a mystery. We, it, we have this insatiable curiosity. We love trying to figure things out. And we, we've done a very, very good job at that. And so the world is just that giant puzzle, that the world puzzle which which we're just on the verge of, of discovering and so that's that's what i feel i don't think that we're going to turn this into something i i still do believe it's you know potentially the dawn of a new golden age and i know science is very worried about that uh, but that's that's what i believe so and i will put this in my to-do pile and i will let him know that i talked about it this one's called flying horizon Mark, I have been flying for 30 years. I have only discovered the flat earth in the past year after listening to you on Coast to Coast Radio. Now when I fly, I notice that my wingtip is always at the same position in relation to the horizon, no matter if I'm at 3,000 feet or 15,000 feet. I never saw the flat horizon, but it is still there. That's from Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I am at the beginning of my own research looking at Air flight in the Southern Hemisphere. Yes, Africa to Perth, Melbourne, Auckland seems to always be one or two stops way out of the way. However, the, uh, South America to Buenos Aires, Rio Grande do fly nonstops to Australia for fairly regular. Doesn't just one flight across the Indian Ocean without a crazy redirect lay this aspect of flat Earth to rest? If the theory is, uh, is the distance is too great secondary to the flat earth then it would be impossible to make a non-stop flight therefore someone can do it it's not a true issue there are many non-stop flights in the southern hemisphere uh to other to southern hemisphere destinations uh, and that's from tracy okay one there aren't 95 percent of the flights I, trust me that's why i made the clues are absolutely multiple connections and again there are a handful of non-stops but that's not the part i was worried about by the time i got to clue nine it was why the non-stops aren't, uh, aren't being tracked, meaning there is no latitude and longitude. The GPS system falls off entirely, which it shouldn't. Remember the GPS system, which is America, DOD, 32 satellites, multiple overlapping blanket coverage things. They do not track flights once they get uh, over the ocean about 200 miles w away from any landmass. In fact, you can find it in the Northern Hemisphere too, which is if you're flying from anywhere in California to Hawaii. Once you get 200 miles off the California coast, the, the plane drops off. I mean, the graphic still may be there. You'll see the little icon. But when you go to latitude and longitude, not there anymore. This one's called Tonight's TV. Mark, you mentioned a program that will be aired tonight on the 10th on the National Geographic Channel. 
can't see much listed but that's probably because i'm in the uk any ideas on how to view it kind regards adam yeah which was interesting so they couldn't watch it live in the uk but if i put it up on youtube which i may and i sent a copy of the the national geographic and if anyone wants it i i will send them i've got a small res version that i can shoot it to you i think it's only 300 megs i can send it through we transfer all you have to do is email me and say hey i want the national geographic thing and if anybody knows how to put it up on youtube without being blocked not copyright strike just blocked uh, I've tried every distortion method I can think of, and uh, National Geographic is having none of it. It's like, nope, blocked, 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 blocked. And it's like, seriously, I'm putting, I'm, re I'm reversing the image. I'm putting text on the screen on the entire time. I'm putting distortion bands. I, I, every trick I've tried is not working. So if anyone's got one, like putting it in a fake movie theater screen or a fake television screen, if you can do that for me, great, wonderful. I will, uh, then I'll put it up on my channel. So, yeah. This one's called World of Warcraft Guild Acceptance. Hi, Mark. My tune, Wervos, has been knocking on your guild's door for a few weeks now. I have not gotten any guild requests. Uh, though due to our second child being born, I haven't been playing lately. I'm going to try adding you as a friend on there. Please accept. Thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, J try to find me. Again, try to send me a message. Remember, the, um, the, the guild is called Flat Earth, and I'm on Stone Mall. I almost forgot what, what server I was on. I've been playing that damn thing so long. This one's called A Picture is Worth a Thousand Words. Mark just thought I would grab a screenshot of Google's search window picture today. Uh, hmm, busy at work, but there are a lot of dots in that picture. Yeah, that was the one for a couple days ago where it was a typewriter. And the typewriter uh, is shooting paper off and it goes into kind of a blackness of space. Yeah, I... Yeah, it's space, obviously. I don't know exactly what, the, but yeah, it's a little, little bit of space reinforcement, but thank you for that. This one's called From Fox News. Steph Curry says he doesn't believe in the U.S. moon landings. Report. Steph Curry says he doesn't believe in U.S. moon landings. That's on Fox News. And he was heard in a podcast saying this. If you guys don't know, if you have if missed this. Now, does he necessarily believe in flat earth? No, he hasn't said that yet, but look, if you're saying that the Apollo missions didn't happen and one of your teammates is Draymond Green, who's also a flat earther, and you're playing in the All-Star game with Kyrie Irving, who is a absolutely is a flat earther, yeah, you're probably a flat earther. He just hasn't said it yet, and he's trying. To, he's testing the waters. And it doesn't really matter if you say that you didn't believe in the moon landing or if you... Uh, uh, if you believe in flat earth, the reporters now have that and they're going to use this against you. He's going to have a rough rest of the season. This one's called earthquakes, meteors, comets, and volcano on flat earth. What are the explanations? Uh, volcanoes, you can look that up. That's a clue I did in um, uh, one of the flat earth clues, meteors and comets, uh, com comets, comets. You, you, I already answered that earlier in the show, but that was from Daniel. Thank you, Daniel, for asking that. This one's called NBR, NBA Star Under Fire After Calling the Moon Landing Fake. Yep, and that's from SanFranciscoGate.com. The Warriors article. Yep, I imagine everybody, because he plays with the Golden State Warriors, so I imagine there's a lot of people in that area that are losing their mind. Here's another Steph Curry thing. Steph Curry! Mark, I'm sure you've heard, but if not, look up what Steph said about NASA. Now Scott Kelly is trolling him. Yeah, even NASA is basically invited him because he's uh, Steph Curry is one of the the top ten players in in the world, and he you know he's got championship rings. He's he's re he's I think just a slight. I honestly I don't know if I could pick between him or Kyrie Irving as far as who's the best player. I know a lot of people say, oh no, Steph Curry he can he can shoot more threes and he's a better, uh, but um, Kyrie Irving has better ball handling skills. Either way. The point is, is that they are uh, way, way up there. And so mainstream media has to address it. And NASA feels like they have to address it, but it's weird. Why would NASA all of a sudden put out these things saying, inviting him to take a look at moon rocks? That's, that's their response, which is not anything else. Oh no, we'll show you some moon rocks. What are you going to do? Bring him into a room, point at these rocks and say, those are moon rocks. And you can take our word for it. We're the United States military. We'd never lie to you. Oh, yeah, that's going to fly. Totally going to buy that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. If he's gotten so far as he's going to publicly say that the Apollo missions didn't happen, you are in a deep, deep hole, which it's going to take a lot for you to climb out of. Now, we'll see if they can convince him. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. You never know. Could be. I'm seeing weirder things, but I, I mean, Shaquille O'Neal backed down out of after 10 days. So, 
Uh, this one's called, let's see here, send message to Google YouTube. Mark, thanks again for all you do promoting Flat Earth Awareness. I was watching the following video this morning about chemtrails. Google YouTube attached an Encyclopedia Britannica authored article on contrails to this video, and we know why. Uh, whenever these panels show up, I typically respond sarcastically, but today I tried a different tactic. Please share this with your listeners if appropriate. They too can respond by putting their cursor within YouTube message panel, which is displayed just below the video. Then three vertical dots appear on the upper right corner of this panel. Clicking on these dots will get you to the response window. You do not have to sign in to send feedback. Oh, okay. Let's see what he wrote. Here's a copy of what I sent. Dear Google and YouTube, thank you for helping us spread the emerging awareness that this earth is some kind of flat and definitely motionless. You make it look as if you are very concerned. I work as an FAA certified A&P mechanic beginning in 1975 and am now retired. So I nostalgic... So I still look at the sky in the sky today. Back in the earlier commercial jet age, turbojets did leave behind somewhat dense contrails for us for up to several hours as described. Today, these jet aircraft are using high ratio bypass fans uh, with propulsion turbine engines that also leave behind contrails, but the exhausted moisture is more thinly dispersed by being quite thoroughly mixed with the bypass fan air. This is also why you almost never see contrails behind turboprop aircraft. Today, jet aircraft contrails, if they are visible at all at high altitudes, usually last even less time and dissipate within a few tens of miles behind where you see that aircraft in the sky. But your dense chemtrails last all day and are typically laid out in a crosshatch pattern and all, and all at nearly the same level. They move in unison across the sky with the upper level prevailing winds and your chemtrails are always followed by overcast skies and bad weather lasting longer than usual. If you study the FAA commercial flight pass allowed, you will notice they have no real correlation with your crosshatched chemtrail patterns. Moreover, commercial flight paths have distinctly different flight level separations and avoid mid-air collisions. Since chemtrails often are visible from horizon to horizon, you should advise your chemical dispersion pilots dispersion pilots to at least incorporate a vertical arch in their flight path to mimic your imaginary curve of the earth your chemtrails are straight and level and thus a great indication of the fact that the earth is also flat and level thanks again for all your help hope you can get a better life uh and and he sent me some screenshots of that that's cool that's awesome thank you for that this one's called NASA Invites Steph Curry. Hi, Mark. My name is Denny Price, and I'm a big fan of yours. I'm very thankful for all the hard work you've put into this movement. I saw the attached link on the news today and wanted to forward it over to you. I'm sure you have seen it and know as well as I do they are going to deceive Mr. Curry into believing that the moon landings were real. Do you happen to know of anyone who could give him a crash course and all the evidence that is all faked? Keep up the good fight, Denny. And yeah, of course, NASA is going to offer him to come over. But if again, if he's made that statement so far, he already doesn't believe anything they say. So literally bringing him into a museum and showing him rocks and pointing and saying, no, we absolutely went to the moon. No, no, not not buying it. Uh, this one's called Russian Spacewalk and Unmanned Mooncrafts. Mark, I want to know if you've seen the latest Russian Spacewalk and the fact that yet again there were no panning of the camera to show the Earth rotating. The two cosmonauts basically did nothing but move around some fiber in a really close angle camera shot for nearly five hours. Also, I thought about something. If NASA really sends probes to Mars, then why wouldn't we regularly send probes to the moon, which is much shorter distance than Mars? Also, these... Uh, Probes would be able to clearly show evidence of men landing on the moon rather than relying or nearly 50-year-old archival footage of the alleged Apollo landings. Also send the 12 slides, survival guide, and coast to coast, please. Oh my gosh, did I again? Nope, and he didn't. All right, just you guys know, you, anyone's listening to my stuff. If you're going to ask for the slides and stuff, put it at the beginning of the email because otherwise I won't be able to do it until later because I don't read that far down. I skim the first part of the email and then... Uh, to save time, and then I'll read it for for the first time on air. Usually, when I get to this, but yes, I will send him the the, the um the, all the information. This one's called No Subject. Hey, Mr. Mark, how are you today? My name is Shane. I really love your content on YouTube, and you probably already are aware of what I'm about to tell you. How would I know this? Uh, but felt necessary to chime in. Most people I don't feel are willing to look at flat Earth proofs, but I found one that almost always makes them. Th at least think about it. There is a sermon on YouTube by a pastor of the name of Tyler Doka. 
His sermon is completely skipped scripture-based evidences of flat earth, but he does use Scientology as a secondary backup. Thought it would be worth the email, though. Thanks again for educating the masses, and I wish more people were as open-minded. Thanks again. My email is blah, blah, blah. Please get back to me. And yeah, I will I will mention that to, to people like I just did. And I will put that in my to-do pile, and I will let him know. This one's called the Nat Geo piece. And what he means is the National Geographic piece, which was aired two days ago. Man, that Nat Geo piece is a trip. They did not rip it to shreds like I thought they would. Their expert did not give one proof, just the usual babble about what we learned through books. As for the boat test across the Salton Sea, they say the stripes are disappearing as it goes across, while at the same time showing traffic on the other side of the lake. <laughs> Too funny. You cannot make this stuff up. Great job, or at least they appeared to take you seriously and did not ridicule the theory or the movement. Stay flat, brother. And that's from Bill Duke. Thank you, Bill. And uh, yeah, I, there was so much they cut out, so much I talked about, which they, they left out. In fact, as far as the, the balloon experiment, remember these experiments were not ours. They were done by a debunking site. They cut out the main experiment, which was the balloons on the other side of the lake, the nine miles across. Cut it out entirely. Did not exist as far as Nat Geo is concerned. So I, I consider it a win because one, we got a whole bunch of exposure out there for it. And yeah, they, they treated flat earth as dangerous to science, but that means they were taking it seriously. This one's called watch Fox news about the flat earth and other conspiracies. Mark, uh, I just seen this. I thought you would like to see, Hey, what's been going on uh, with you and Patricia. I haven't seen any new shows from her or you. Uh, and that's from Marty. I, Patricia's taking a break after the conference. And uh, hopefully she'll be back in the swing of things soon. We'll see. I mean, the holidays are coming up. Not a lot of people do stuff in December anyway. And uh, as far as the Fox News thing, yeah, it was a show on Fox called The Five, which was done, I believe it was yesterday. And you can check it out. I put it up on my channel and they talked about, of course, the Steph Curry thing from Golden State. And then they immediately tied it to Kyrie Irving and they made the connection between Steph and Kyrie and uh, moon landings and flat earth, which they should be connected. They go hand in hand. It was perfect. And I and they spent quite a bit of time at the end of the show on it. And it's a, it made a lasting impression, which is why I put it up on my channel. This one's called NC Date. Hi, Mark. I'm, oh, okay. The North Carolina date. Yep. And the, the mini conference is going to come up in the spring 2019 in North Carolina. I'm going to be speaking at, uh, and I will, I'll get more details to you guys as we get along. This one's called the Vertigon File Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. My name is Brian Werner, and in addition to being an author, I'm a truther and a flat earth believer. I've come into believing this over the past couple of years, and I've recently re released, as far as I know, the first flat earth novel called The Verticon File. My publisher is Jumpmaster Press, and I'm uh, in the process of networking with voices in the Flat Earth Truth community, including Patricia Steer and Rob Skiba. Your videos were some of the first that opened my eyes to the geocentric truth, and I wanted to thank you for taking the stand for the truth. I would love to send you a copy of The Verticon File for your consideration in either paperback or ebook format. The novel is currently on Amazon, and I'm attaching a photo featuring the cover art and plot synopsis with this email. My website is Brian Weimer. W E I M E R dot com. Perhaps you would be open to doing a future podcast regarding Flat Earth. Regardless, thank you for reading this email and I hope to hear back from you. Thanks, Brian. And I will put that in my to do thing and I will ask for an e copy of it so I can check it out. This one's called Question Mark. Is this email address for Paul on the Plane? Thanks, Jack Frost. Haha. <laughs> funny. Funny. It's really a funny joke. Uh, and what he was talking about is last night is. Uh, um, Paul in the Plane that does a show on True Frequency Radio just before mine. Uh, one of the people that calls in to my show called in early while Paul was still talking and, and he was confused because he, he was like, wait, why isn't this Mark Sargent? And I, hopefully Paul didn't get offended. But because of that, everybody on my show that called in was asking if I was Paul in the Plane. Very funny, guys. Seriously. And, uh, let's see if that continues on next week. Um, this one's called Mark, please send me the National Geographic Salt and Sea via WeTransfer. Thanks. And that's from Dan. Yep. I, I will put it up online. I will put it. It's going to be blocked if I put it in the United States, but everyone outside the United States, and by that, I mean, Canada and England. I mean, it's, it's weird. It's only blocked in the United States and the United States Virgin Islands. So, you know, all, all the little islands. It's so weird that they would, they would do that. 
Um, this one's called Hi Mark, okay to re read on air. Um, someone is mirrored on daily motion, a lower resolution version of the 10 minute flat earth segment of the National Geographic special. Let's see the link below. Please forward this link to anyone who can't view it on YouTube as it may work better for them. I think you did very well on this despite the clips that didn't make it into the final cut. Take care, Jack. And yeah, it's on dailymotion.com. You can look it up if you get a chance, the, the National Geographic flat earth thing. I don't go to Daily Motion, uh, but you guys can go there if you want. This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, send me the sur Survival Guide. Thanks, Jason. Yep, if anyone wants a free Survival Guide, uh, you can just email me at msargent23 at comcast.net and, and just say Survival Guide. That's it. I mean, there's a bunch of different things I give away for free. Uh, one is the Survival Guide, one's the 12 uh, slides from Just Jack, the five science questions. And if you want my interviews from coast to coast, they're not going to come uh, through email. They're too big, but I will send them through WeTransfer. And now I may have to send the Nat Geo stuff too. Unless, again, I, I'd love it if somebody could uh, grab the Nat Geo piece if you haven't already or if you know how to make it to where it's not going to be blocked in the United States. Uh, love, love to know the trick. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to do the trick myself because my, my video editing skills are still not that great. This one's called following a lead. Mark, I've been keeping up with your channel and one thing jumped out at me. I do, I too find it a little off by all the trolls making comments on NASA debunked videos and flat earth proof videos. It all too closely related to once again playing on the emotion of humans and not the facts being made. After reading a bunch of brutal comments and following some of the trolls around, they seem to only watch and comment on such videos. They can't be coincidence, and I do believe they're paid to create names and troll to bully us back. Just my thoughts. Uh, thank you, Will. Um, look, trolls are trolls. Uh, to quote a, uh, a, a talented songwriter, haters gonna hate hate, 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 hate. There's nothing you can do. Uh, you, I literally can make a video uh, called happiness and it just is a puppy and a kitten uh, trying to squeeze into the same slipper with a butterfly uh, overhead. And there would be people literally within like the first two hours, you know, thumbs down, that is effing gay. And then just, just go on these tirades. Some people, uh, look, they, they grow up in pain and there's nothing, nothing I can do. They're, they're just they're just full of hate and they got to send it somewhere. Uh, this is called men in black. Hello, Mark speaking as someone who has become interested in the subject, but not convinced. I was wondering if you believe you are revealing the truth and you surely would be considered a significant threat to the scientific establishment and controlling powers of the world. Yeah. That's what national geographic said. Do you not therefore have concerns over your safety? Uh, no, cause I never married, never had kids. Don't care. Um, I, one of those, uh, people that, uh, I don't, if you don't have leverage on me in some way, there's not going to be much you can do, which is why I can't really be threatened or, or even bribed for that matter. If I was, tw if I was 30, yeah, you came in with, with a briefcase of money and maybe you might be able to bribe me. Yeah. Not now. <laughs> what, what are you gonna do with, what are you gonna do with money for me? It's not, it's not gonna, not gonna, I'm not, I'm not driven by that. Again, the, the quote I used in my last speech, which was, I don't, I don't want to be famous. I just want to be right. It's, you know, whatever, whatever helps me sleep at night. That's basically what I'm into. Uh, let's see here. Surely anyone with the knowledge you claim to have would potentially be on the list somewhere. Yeah, maybe. I'm sure they know who I am, but what are you going to do? Uh, don't you worry about the visit from the men in black. I encourage it. I'd love for people to come at me. Love it. You remember, I'm also a survivalist. I you know, love, love for someone to pay me a visit. Maybe the, maybe they've already paid you a visit. And if so, perhaps could you tell us about it? No, they haven't yet. No. In fact, it, 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 they would stick out like a sore thumb here on the island. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a rural island north of Seattle. Uh, no. I, you know, no tail. Well, I mean, they may be good at following you, but there's nowhere to hide here. Uh, I suppose they could tap my phones. Haven't gotten any threatening emails, no threatening phone calls, nothing uh, along those lines of being suspicious. So I, I mean, every once in a while, I get some drunk guy I'll call up. It's like, we're watching you. And then you'll hear him laugh and then they hang up. But other than that, no, it's, it's been very uh, hands off. No one's touched me. Uh, or or even postured against me, which is again interesting. I, I I'm I'm a little offended in some ways that that nobody I haven't gotten that 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 email or someone says, hey look, how would you feel about working with us? Maybe they're afraid I'd I'd tell about, talk about it. 
Uh, do you think at the very least that everything you put out is being closely monitored? Yes, absolutely closely monitored. Uh, and my inquiry may sound lighthearted, but I mean quite serious. Very best wishes, Paul. And yeah, to the point where, uh, I, and people say, no, you're delusional if you think this. No, when I did, when, when Flat Earth became more popular than the President of the United States, and I made a video to that effect saying Flat Earth catches the President of the United States, and we were beating him in relevant search results on YouTube, 20.9 to 20.8 million, and, and that was even six months ahead of the schedule I had, then literally within a few weeks after that, the relevant search results category was removed from YouTube. And and what I'm talking about is you go in any search engine, you type in any topic, uh, you know, type in tractors into uh, Google, you'll get relevant search results or search results equals a number. And on YouTube, that's been there since YouTube was created and it was torn down. There was no update. There was no massive interface change. It was just pulled down the, the scoreboard. They tore down the scoreboard. And it was because, in my opinion, because they, they knew that we were watching it and I was watching it cl more closely than anyone. I was tracking the numbers and we were huge. We're, we, we still are huge. And it was the only thing they could, they could do. I, I understood the argument completely of why they did it, which was they were trying to curb our enthusiasm. It's like, well, they're getting so excited about the score. Let's just, let's just get rid of the score. Pretty genius, actually. All right, let's do one more. Let's call it, let's call this one the last one. Steph Curry. Let's end on a Steph Curry one. Uh, Mark, thanks for showing the Fox News segment on Steph Curry. I don't watch anymore. I noticed in the comments someone asking about uh, Patricia Steer. Uh, what's going on, uh, Teresa? Look, she's taking a break. She she works very very hard at the flatter thing. She's done hundreds of interviews and dedicated a lot of time and effort. And uh, the the culmination of the Denver conference, there was just a lot of stuff going on, and so she she's she's not gone. She's still around. And in fact, her video is uh, that she was on for CBS News is currently the number one in the search results when you type it type in flat Earth to YouTube. So there you go. On to that, let us close this one down, and we'll do another one soon. Uh, by the way, you can email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.